painful. You can learn through pain and trial. You can learn through trial and error. But many people, you don't learn. You don't learn from trial and error. After all the drugs, after all the fights, you begin to rest it and stuff, and you still don't learn. You still don't learn that sin is bad. You still don't get, after all the heartbreaks, after all the women that scammed you, you're still doing the same thing. It doesn't make any sense, people. It doesn't make any sense. You're not learning from your mistakes. God has all this mercy for you so you can learn from your mistakes and come to Christ and be forgiven. But many people, you don't seek wisdom. You're not seeking knowledge from Christ. So you're not learning from anything, people. I learned. Oh, thank you, man. God bless you. A lot of people, you're not learning. I learned from all my, all my, I learned from my past life of sin. It's terrible. I learned. It's not what you think it is. It's not fun. It, it, it's, it's not worth it at all. So people, are, are you learning? Are you, are, you, are you just going along? Could you imagine, people, could you imagine going to a school building? Uh, could, you, could you imagine you go to school and you get an F every single, on every single test and you don't study for the next test, you keep failing. That's how it is, folks. We keep living in sin and you don't come to Christ. You know this lifestyle is not working. You keep getting your heart broken. You keep getting worse and worse over time. You're losing friends and stuff like that. You're losing money. You're becoming an addict. You realize people with wisdom are like, wow, man, this stuff is not working out. Maybe I should change my life. But no, what do sinners do? Well, I'm going to keep going to the same problem that destroyed me. That doesn't make any sense. If drugs are destroying you, why keep going back to drugs? If that guy keeps breaking your heart, why, why you keep going back to him? It doesn't make any sense to keep going to the same thing that burned you the first time, and the second time, and the third time, and the fourth time. This is what sin is, folks. Sin, sin makes people stupid. Sin makes us dumb. The Bible says the wise will inherit glory, but shame should be motion of fools. Because God gives you years to get right with him. God gives you years, folks. Years. So how, how, how are you folks? You've been, you've been an alcoholic for years. How have how you not learned that drinking is bad for you? How have you not learned that? People have been sleeping around for years and years. How have you not learned that it is not good for you? It's not good for your soul. Your soul is crying out. Your soul is being torn apart. And you still keep going back to the same clubs and stuff. You keep going back to the same girl's house that's been sleeping around with your um, with your bros and stuff like that. You're not learning. You're, you're not learning. God keeps sending punishment and judgment, and you're, you're not taking heed to it. You're not taking heed to it at all. All right, Ephesians five. Be therefore followers of God as their children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and have given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savior. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once in among you as become of saints. So Paul is talking to the saints of God. When you become a saint of God, because you can become a saint, it says do not let fornication or any uncleanness be named among you as becoming saints of God. Verse 4, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not which are not convenient but rather giving giving of thanks. So people, the Bible says, when you become uh, born again, you, you, be, you have a new nature. You have a new nature as, as a child of God. Uh, many people, you don't understand what it means to be born again. When you're born again, you're not joking around the same thing. You're not making dirty jokes. You're not out, you're not out here going to clubs like you used to. Like when I was in the world, I was a sinner. I did what sinners do, I did. I made all types of weird, filthy jokes. I was, you know, chasing girls, I was having sex with shit that's not my wife. Because I was a sinner, but when I became a saint, I stopped doing all that stuff. I, I hated that stuff. Uh, I did not want to do that stuff anymore. I gave up the way I started speaking. I gave up the way I was moving. I was uh, conducting myself as a man of God. That's how it is, a child of God. You have to change the way you conduct yourself as, as, a, as a child of God. You cannot talk the same, you know what I'm saying? You cannot go to the same places like you used to in the world. 
You cannot do it, folks. As a child of God, you have a completely new nature. You have a completely new nature as a child of God. So as a child of God, I, I didn't think I didn't think it was cool to make all types of sexual jokes and all types of weird jokes because it's unholy, it's, it's unclean, it's not right in the eyes of God. So as a child of God, folks, your whole nature will change. And when your whole nature changes, usually your, your friend group will change too. Because when you're a sinner, your friends are usually sinners. I mean, sinners don't have friends usually when they sing. So as a child of God, when you become born again, you, you usually will lose friends because your friends will not like being around you because you love purity. You're pure, you're holy. You're not joking around with them no more. You're not going to clubs. You're not getting drunk. You're not out there playing with yourself no more. You're, you're, actually, you're actually walking in um, righteousness. And wicked people don't like walking with righteous people. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not because you're not going to have righteous people um, doing what sinners do. True righteous people are true righteous people. So Jesus Christ will change your nature. So you don't come to Christ perfect. You can come to, come to Christ as broken as you want to be. But Jesus is in the business of, of changing you and shaping you, folks. You have to let Christ change you. But the problem with generation is you don't, want, you don't want to let God change you. You want the world to change you. You want the, you want the world to change you. You want to be just like the world. You want to dress like the world. You want to talk like the world. You want the devil to change you. But when God says, hey, be like this, you're like, nah, I, I can't be like that, man. I got I to gotta, I gotta keep up with the fashion. I got to look good for Instagram. I got to look good for Snapchat. And this is a problem with generation, people. So you, you people can change. You, you're okay with changing, but you don't want to change for God. You, you want to change for the world because you want to you want to fit into the world. You want to please the world, but you don't want to change for God and please God. And, that, and that's the sad truth of the matter is. Because when the world says, you know what, um, wear this, do this, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. But when God says, you know what, give up this stuff for me, and you're like, nah, I can't do that, man. I can't do that, God. But I still love you, though. People, people feel like you can disobey God. I, still be like, I love you, though, God. I still love you, man. I don't read your word. I don't obey you, but I still love you, though. No, you don't. You don't love God. Stop lying to yourself. Stop lying to God. Jesus says, if you love me, you keep my commandments. So if God tells you to do something and you say no, that, that show, that's a sign of hate. That's not a sign of love because God wants obedient children. The children of disobedience are, are the devil. You know what I'm saying? Because God knows what's best for you, people. When God tells you to do something, it, it's for your benefit. It, it's for your benefit. God knows what's best for you. God bless you, man. All right, wait. Can I give you something, bro? Can I give you something, man? He's good. Hallelujah. You know Christ, though, bro. You know Christ? It's true. God is good. Hallelujah, man. Hey, hey he's coming back, man. Gotta be born again, man. Gotta be born again. Huh? Oh, it's okay, bro. It's okay, though. It's okay, bro. Hey, bro. Repent for your sins, bro. Jesus loves you, bro. He loves you, man. So people, um, Christ, Christ is calling you to obedience. He's calling you to holiness and obedience. So are you being obedient to Christ? Or are you being obedient to your flesh? Or are you being obedient to the devil? Most, most, a lot of folks are very obedient to Satan. You might not know it, you might not care, but you're very obedient to the, to the devil. Jesus Christ says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. So Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. But many people, you listen to the voice of the devil. When the devil calls you to, you know, to commit wickedness, you listen to it. Verse 5 of Ephesians 5. For this you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is idolater have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. So the Bible says no whoremonger. So those are guys who sleep around with all types of women. Guys who sleep around with whores pretty much. Nor unclean person. So people who want to like masturbate, touch themselves. Um, I mean, a lot of people can fall into that category. Uh, covetous people, people who want... 
other things from other people, people who you want you desire other people's belongings, you want you want other people's cars and wives and stuff like that, but you're not content with your own life. Uh, who, idolaters. The Bible says they have no inheritance in the kingdom of God in Christ. That means if you live a lifestyle like this, folks, you have no place in the kingdom of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for for become for because of these things come with the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Oh, God bless you, man. Thank you. God says, let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things, the wrath of God, because, well, things come with the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. So people, a lot of folks can deceive you with vain words, um, like evolution. People talking about you come from animals and stuff like that. Or people start talking about, you know, I believe in the universe and like, all this stuff is vain words that's not, it's not getting you close to Christ. It, it's all a waste of time. People are worried about, you know, trying to save the planet, global warming. People worry about trying to save the whales. Like, how does this get you closer to God? How does this get you closer to God? It's not. It, all this stuff is vain. It's, it's very, very vain. The news, what keeps you distracted in vain things, you know, Kim Kardashian and Andrew Tate and this guy, this, this girl now, this rapper has to be with this rapper. All this stuff is vain. It's not getting you close to God. It doesn't matter. It's not important. It's important to sinners, but it's not important in, in, a, in, a, in a grand scheme of things. It's not important. Yeah, you can, man. Yes. I'm just saying as an example that it's not, it's not important what's going on with Kim Kardashian. <laughs> I'm just saying like the, the world, society keeps you distracted in like things that don't matter. So you're not putting your attention on God. You see what I'm saying? It's like with all the, of all the, of all the like problems in the world, like poverty, human trafficking, homelessness, death, rape, all this stuff is going on, but the world is busy talking about like celebrities. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make any sense. Like people got problems in the world, but the news is not talking about Solutions, like they don't want you. They don't want you to, talk, to think about things that actually matter. But all the problems in the world, the world is like, hey man, you know, let's talk about celebrities. Let's talk about the rich people. You know what I'm saying? Let's let's talk about, um, you know, sports. You know what I'm saying? Like, if all the problems in the world going on, the news is like, let's talk about the famous people who don't care about us. It's it's, it's stupidity. It's craziness. So be not ye there for partakers with them, for you are sometimes darkness but now you're in you are light in the in the lord walk as children of the light so people the bible says you were sometimes in darkness but now you're light in the lord walk as children of the light for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful words of darkness but rather reprove them for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of done of them in secret but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou, awake thou thou sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Can I give you something? Can I give you something? Just a gospel track. God bless you, man. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of the, of the secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever does make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. So people, a lot of you people are spiritually dead right now. And God is saying, Awake, arise up. God, Christ will give you light. He will give you life inside your spirit. Stop being spiritually dead. Stop, stop dragging your feet through life. Stop thinking life's all about just paying bills and dying. Awake up, awake up, people. Lord God, uh, may you please bless people's human spirits on this place right now. In Jesus' name, Lord God, all you, uh, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, to be a blessing upon this bridge right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Awake, folks. See then that we see then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming in time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not be not unwise, but understanding that the will of the Lord is. And the Bible says this. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. So be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Speaking to yourselves in psalms 
and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as, as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is sub subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. So you people who are out here doing swinging and stuff like that, you need to, you need to chill out with that stuff and repent. Um, yeah, so Bible talks about how wives should submit to their husbands and things like that. And people, uh, understand this, submission, um, when a wives, when God says wives submit to your husbands, that's not, that's not a bad thing to submit to your husband. You know, women, you, actually women, you want to submit to your husband. You want a godly man to lead you, you know what I'm saying? I know people say things like, well, I want 50-50 in a relationship. That, that's not really a true thing. Like, I have to be a leader, uh, part of a group, you know what I'm saying? Everybody cannot be a CEO. Everybody cannot be a manager, you know what I'm saying? We, we have to submit to one, one another, folks. God bless you, sir. So this, this is the thing, folks. This is the thing. When God calls women to submit to men, it does not mean women are less than men. That's not how that works. You're not less than a man because God calls you to submit to your husband. God calls you to submit to your own husband, not every random guy. But that doesn't make you weak or inferior to men. It's just the role you play as a woman. All of us have roles to play as male, male and female. We're all equal in the, in the eyes of Christ. God died for the males and the females, folks. So understand this. Be in, uh, in, understand this. In, a, in, a, in God's kingdom, there are roles, there are positions to play. And it doesn't mean you have less value than the other person. Like I said earlier, everyone's not going to be a CEO of the company. Some people you're employees right now, but that doesn't mean your doesn't mean your boss has more value than you. No, that's just that there's just a position you play in a company. You're an employee. You got managers. You got supervisors. You got the boss. These are all just roles. So in the eyes of God, God has roles too in His structure of family, and a woman is supposed to submit to the man, as um, the church is submitted to Christ. But it's nothing bad about submitting to man. There's nothing wrong with submitting to your own husband. Hallelujah. But I know the world nowadays wants to kind of like break the family structure. The world nowadays wants to act like, you know, a woman cannot submit to her husband or that makes the woman weak and things like that. But, re but really, folks, the devil is really destroying the generation of women in this ideology because women, women feel like for them to have power, they have to be on top of everything. You know what I'm saying? They have to have all this money. They have to have this um, crazy sex life. And that, that's not how you get power, folks. That's not true power, sleeping around with people and having a lot of money. That's not true power. It's not true happiness. Um, just because you see a lot of people do it, doesn't mean that that brings them satisfaction. So now you have a generation of women who feel like they have to compete with men. Women, you're not made to compete with men. We're not made to compete with one another. We actually need one another. Men need women. Women need men. We're, we're made, we're complement each other. We're made to serve each other. We're not, it's not about going against each other. All this male versus female stuff is demonic. It comes from Satan to separate, you know, true love, true relationships. Because you have a whole generation of men who hate women, women hate men. Everyone's bitter, everyone's prideful, and it's not, it's not, it can't work out like this, folks. We can't have a nation full of, you know, angry, independent women and, you know, angry, you know, guys who can't control their sexual desires. It's, it's going to breed into something um, evil. It's going gonna, it's gonna to turn into chaos. So as a woman, you're called to submit to your husband, your, your, your husband, but there's not it's not, it's not it's nothing wrong with that, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Because women, you're being brainwashed nowadays to have like this Jezebel spirit, to not submit to anyone, to be independent, to be, you know, the, uh, you don't you don't need a man. All that stuff is not what you need. You, you're gonna you're gonna leave, you're gonna live a very lonely life. You'll you'll live a very lonely life as a woman if you feel like you don't need a man, you don't wanna submit to a man. Because the Bible says, um, God did not make um God made man, it's not good for a man to be alone. So God did not make you to be alone as a man, as a female. God did not make you to be alone. But but the world is trying to 
push his agenda that you don't need each other, you don't need a man, you don't need a woman, all you need is money. All, yeah, money's not gonna get you happy. Money's not gonna satisfy you, people. There's a lot of people who have a lot of money, they're single, but they're miserable. They have like 10,000 cats and stuff like that. Do you want that life? You have all the money in the world. You have, you have no family. No one loves you. You have all these animals around you, but you have no family. That's terrible. But at least you're independent though, right? At least you're independent. Come on, people. Don't, don't let that be you. Don't, don't die a Jezebel. Don't die a Jezebel woman. Don't be that woman who died, you know, with no love, no, no nothing in their life. Because w w when women get old, they're gonna want kids. They're, they're gonna want a family. Right now, women, you're young. You feel like you got all the time in the world, but you don't. You really don't understand where your life's gonna end. You don't understand how short life is. So it's not the time to play around. This is not the time to just open your legs to every Chad and Tyrone and Jeremy you can see on the block. You really gotta get your life right with Christ and, and understand your value as a woman. It's not found in your body. Your value is not found in how sexy you look on the outside, but it's found in Christ. It's found in your honor. Uh, walk as a woman of God. Walk as a um, virtuous woman. Hallelujah. A virtuous woman. Who can find one? Who can find a virtuous woman? Who can find a virtuous woman? It's easy to find a Jezebel woman. They're all out here, folks. Jezebel women are everywhere nowadays. They're everywhere. But who can find a godly woman? A woman who fears God and loves God. These women... These women are like jewels. These women are rare nowadays. And I mean, they're out there. They're, they're definitely out there. But the, the society is not going to promote a um, virtuous woman. Society is not going to promote a virtuous woman. Society promotes all types of whores and all types of um, evil women. Society promotes women like Cardi B and porn stars and stuff like that. So we, so we have all these women... When, when these women see all these um, idols of women, they're just, you know what I'm saying, whores and nasty women, then these women feel like, okay, well, that's why I should be as a woman. I should be like Cardi B, or I should be like, you know what I'm saying, I, sh I should be like this porn star. So that's terrible, folks. That's called perversion. You're a pervert. You need to repent. So this is the problem with women, folks. Women don't have any good idols of women. They don't have any good idols of women because a lot of women who are, who are exalted by the world, they're evil, and they're wicked, and they're nasty. They're very nasty. So women, you really gotta understand what's trying to influence you. Where you get your influence from. Even as guys, guys, where, where you get your influence from? Because guys, the world's trying to influence you too with all types of bad role models for guys. All types of like rappers and drug dealers. Cause what, what the world promotes all types of violent people, you know, like the mafia and, and gang members. Like people, people glorify gang members. But anyone who lives in a game know that know that lifestyle is not cool. It's, it's not it's not safe. But the world glorifies these dangerous people. Why? It's bad role models, folks. And that spirit goes inside your goes inside your soul. And now you wanna now you wanna be cool. Now you wanna be a gangster. Now you, now you wanna be a thug for no reason. You know what I'm saying? You trying to be something you're not because you feel like you know this person has it made. Or this person has the has the answers to my problems, but you, that they don't. These bad role models are, are giving you more problems. These bad role models are giving you more problems in your life. Because I said for you serving Christ, I said for you living with Christ in peace and joy, you're out here um, I'm causing all types of mayhem in your life, trying to be something you're not. Because you're not, no one's made to live in sin. You're all made to worship God and live for God. Because if you're, if you're not living for Jesus Christ, you're not living for who you're supposed to be. You're not your true self if you don't have God. Because getting drunk it is not your true self. It, it's just not who you're made to be. It's not God's plans for your life. It's not God's plan for your life to perish. The Bible said God does not desire for anyone to perish. God doesn't want you to perish in your sin. So that means God doesn't want you to live in sin. God doesn't, 